Can was an ordinary shy guy. Chapter one. Ordinary. Can was a simple shy guy. Oh yes, very normal. There was nothing remarkable about Can. No, indeed, he was as unremarkable as a can. Can a can be remarkable? Well, can can, thought can. But only can thought that can could, at least as far as can knew. However, as an unremarkable shy guy, what could that imply about can? Well, clearly, what is it that ordinary shy guys are inclined to do? Most shy guys are found to be bandits and crooks, and as one of many, can fell into that very same category, as there was nothing at all remarkable about Can. Can was a crook who had his little shy eyes on the bigger shy prize. The other shy guys couldn't compare much to Can's shy surprise. A large diamond, a levitating blue jewel resonating with powerful magic, was on the pedestal to be glorified in the Toad's Great Museum. Nobody really knew what the thing did, but everybody knew that it looked pretty, and they knew that it looked new, which was no news in the Toad's news. In fact, the electric blue diamond got front headlines of the newspaper three days in a row. Toadberg's blue diamond, still blue and still a diamond. This headline got the attention of Shy Guys for all three of those days. All of the others were plain, ordinary, and none of them had anything special about them in any way. But Can, Can was different, in that he was the 694th Shy Guy to attempt to steal the diamond, as opposed to the 693rd. You know what they say, Can thought to himself. 694th time's a charm. The Shy Guy adjusted his belt, puffed out his little chest, then marched towards the museum, straight out of the door of his hut. The hut in itself was unremarkable, like him. A small square with a window, a front garden, and of course, a flag with his mask on it, sticking out of the roof. Very simple, as any other shy guy would have. It was only after the first few steps that Can realized he had no idea how to get to the museum, but he would find a way. Even if he was an absolutely boring shy guy, it would only take the brains of an ordinary person to figure out something as ordinary as this museum. Can strolled his way on his stump legs to the town of Toads. Red Toads, Blue Toads, Yellow Toads, and Orange Toads were walking to and fro. Colors of all sorts were effectively everywhere. Other creatures were also there. Koopas who turned away from Bowser's authority were strolling about on the busy streets, and so were a few bob -ombs. Can was more inclined to trust these creatures rather than the regular toads. Can tracked down the nearest bob -omb that he could find, just a regular black sentient explosive making his way through life. He stopped the bob -omb in his tracks. Excuse me, do you know where the museum is? No, not particularly. My interests lay elsewhere. I want to be a pirate. Bomb! It's always been my dream to be a part of the cannon fighters. Bomb bomb! But the museum. But pirates! It was at this moment that Can realized this bob bomb actually did have the intelligence of a sentient explosive. He decided to end the conversation here. Well, I hope you become a pirate someday. I just know you'll be an eruption of heroism. Of course! It'll be a real blast! I'll see you later! Can made a note to self never speak with bob bombs again. Thankfully, a nearby Koopa was coming his way. What a coincidence. Hopefully this man would have a little more concentration time than the bob -omb. Can greeted him with a wave. H hello The Koopa looked to Can. Can was amazed. He didn't think that this would work so smoothly. Oh, hey there, guy! You looking for the museum? Everyone is recently. They really like that big old jewel! Oh, so... You're telling me that I'm not out of the ordinary for wanting to see the museum? Can began to rub his tiny stub hands together, menacingly. Excellent. The green shelled compadre pointed off to a large building in the distance. It was wide and proud and looked like it was carved entirely out of stone. You see that palace looking thing over yonder? 
Yeah, that's where you want to go. Check it out, man. You'll seriously love the way artists mask their paintings. The shy guy couldn't help feeling the slightest bit self-conscious when he said mask. Wow, that sounds... relatable. The Koopa glanced Can over several times, as though analyzing him, then analyzing his analysis, which was then further analyzed analytically. Say, you don't have anything planned, do you? Can could feel himself starting to sweat. Plans? What plans? I don't have any plans. Not at all. No plans here. I couldn't have less of a plan. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. I've always been a scattered brink klutz ever since I was a child. A wee little guy confused in the way of his life without any plans. I don't have any plans at all. Nope. The Koopa looked at him. Can stood stiff. The Koopa looked at him a little closer. Can was getting uncomfortable. The Koopa leaned in painfully close and then violently sniffed. Can did not know what was going on anymore. Okay, just being sure, I believe you totally. By the way, my name's Rock. Nice to meet you. Ken was sweating still. He wiped some of the nervous residue away from his forehead. Right. And you as well. Very open of you, might I add. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, thanks. I actually used to be reclusive, so I'm working on getting out of my shell. Well, that's wonderful, Rock. I'm sure you've really tossed the competition right out of the ocean. As Can approached the tall stone building, he couldn't help but feel smaller by comparison as he approached it. Things do look smaller when they're further away and much bigger when they're closer up. Can started to wonder something. If he felt increasingly shrunk with every step that he took as he approached the building, was he actually making any real progress? After all, the smaller he was, the less distance he would be making. If he was half the size, he would be going half the distance, and the more he shrunk, the less distance he would be making. In the shy guy's little brain, which seemed to be getting smaller in comparison to the brain that was ten steps behind, he could take as many steps as he wanted, but he would always be at least one step away. Thankfully, this was just a mathematical hypothesis, and the real can was actually close by. Yes, this was not some sort of ridiculous equation. This was a little shy guy's little shy life. And by goodness, he was going to live it. Can made his way to the museum. There were many artifacts and paintings to be found within, crafted by the finest artisans that the community had to offer. So effectively, a Goomba painting something in their mother's basement. It was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. Can knew that this was his time to act. He scurried silently through the museum. The quiet little shy guy just knew that he was the stealthiest of them all. Some toasts thought it was kind of odd to see a small shy guy dodging around on his equally small stub legs. Clearly they couldn't see genius when it was there. He tiptoed to the edge of the wall, fiendishly. Looking past the corner, Can saw the purpose of his existence, at least the purpose that had defined his existence for the past three days. The blue jewel of legend, the object that would give him more money than he could ever hope to spend, and more recognition than any other shy guy before him. Hi! Hello! By the stars, it was a toad. Museum toad, to be specific. Yes, they're all very unique to each other. It clearly mattered so much what title they had, because that gave them all the defining characteristics they needed. Oh, hi, Museum Toad. Funny seeing you here. I was just standing harmlessly in this corner. What were you doing? I was watching you! I can't help but wonder why you were standing there! Doesn't seem too harmless to me! Can shifted his gaze to the side because that was a very can thing to do. Oh, and why would that be? I did take you to be a detective, Museum Toad. Museum Toad leaned in. Can had the worst sense of deja vu. Thankfully, a Museum Toad did not decide to violently sniff. No, he did something which was even worse. He maintained eye contact and simply stared at Can. Can was waiting for Museum Toad to answer his question. Museum Toad decided not to answer his question. He simply stood there. 
staring at him. For a very long time. And Kan stared back. They gazed into each other's eyes for a moment. Ken wasn't sure what type of feelings he got when he gazed into the speculating eyes of the toad. Did he want a kiss? A cookie? The keys to his car? By God, this was awkward. Ken was beginning to wonder when this would end. Ken broke the silence. Why wouldn't my skulking be- I've got my eyes on you, Mr. Guy! Come near this diamond jewel of sparkliness! And I'll have the guards come and haul you out of here! Understand? Of course. I wasn't planning on stealing anything whatsoever. Please, you have no reason to keep such a sharp eye on a harmless shy guy like me. I promise. The museum toad stared at him for a little bit longer. At last, he broke eye contact and simply walked away. Ken couldn't help but feel a tad bit self-conscious, considering that this was the second time something like this had happened to him today. He didn't know whether to feel vulnerable or attractive. Now that he was alone, Ken stared at the jewel. Honestly, he wasn't exactly certain how he was going to get it out of here. Truth be told, he never thought he would get this far. He wouldn't be able to just walk out with it, which had kind of been his plan all along, if he was honest. Ken wasn't the cleverest of them all, no sir. He was just as plain as the rest of them. Thankfully, he was confident in his hoodie's ability to defy the laws of physics and space. He would simply stuff the massive thing in his pocket. Yes, that's what he would do. It was perfect. A foolproof plan. The shy guy took off his belt from around his hoodie, truly an exquisite choice of fashion, and spun it around like a lasso. His plan? Whip it towards the jewel, pull back, and claim it as his own. What a shame it was that nothing like that happened. He shot it towards the jewel and missed entirely. Oh dear. It hit a painting instead. Somehow it was deflected from the painting, bouncing off to an expensive sculpture of Princess Daisy. Can't gasp, fearing the worst. It merely bounced off the sculpture towards an even fancier recreation of the world-famous painting, the Mona Pizza. Can covered his eyes, drenched in his own sweat, as tension filled his body. It went right past the painting and instead found itself wrapped around a pinkish-white pearl the size of a bowling ball. Can uncovered his eyes, realizing what had just happened. For a moment, he was surprised that nothing had gone terribly wrong. Huh. What a relief. This wasn't exactly the legendary item that everybody had been after this whole time, but it would do. He pulled the item towards him. Sadly, he did not account for all the priceless items between him and the object. He knocked over a fancy steel set of armor, which then calmly fell over sideways. It smacked into his sculpture of Toadsworth. Then into the first and largest lollipop to ever reach 200 years old, standing at 7 feet tall, or now falling at 7 feet tall. Numerous other miscellaneous items fell over like dominoes, which created a cacophony of clanging and banging for all the world to hear. Cam was about to scream and cry. The pearl fell into his hands from the belt. Well, at least nobody had to witness any of that. Oh my god! Screamed a familiar toad. Oh boy! Oh golly! Oh gee! Can turned around to see the toad, still holding the pearl in his hands while the museum rested in mostly ruins. He was sweating. Everything was broken except for the massive gem that he was after in the first place. Of course. He held the pearl behind his back. This isn't what it looks like. This is exactly what it looks like, guy! I know what's going on here! Can held his breath. You left your belts undone! Then you tripped and fell! Causing this whole mess! I told them that you shouldn't have put those fancy things together in a row! It's a recipe for disaster! Honestly, the lucky little shy guy couldn't believe what he was hearing. Oh, why, I mean... Yeah, haha, <laughs> cl clumsy me. Whoops. Fucking Christ! exclaimed the toad in his shrill toad voice. You carry along now, guy, while the rest of us toads clean up this mess! We're sorry for your inconvenience! Come again! The shy guy walked away with his pearl. Something had actually gone right for him today. 
Wow, that was unexpected. Ken quickly scurried back to his little hut, his legs darting around like Sonic. The mere thought of Sonic was making him hungry. It was his favorite drive through food joint, after all. Once he was back home, he slammed the door and pressed his back against it. He had no idea how on earth someone as plain and ordinary as him could have managed to walk away with such a humongous score. He'd actually stolen something from the museum. Certainly it wasn't what he was after, but it was something. Rao, he uttered quietly. Rao was right. He held the pearl and examined it closely. He rubbed his little stub hands on it, polishing it to make sure it was in the perfect shape. He gazed at it. The little shy guy could see his mask in the reflection of the orb, misshapen as though looking into a spoon. It was so sparkly and pristine. Amazing! At once, his reflection turned into that of a living, cackling skeleton wearing a pirate's hat. You're matey! Ken quickly dropped it, recoiling as it rolled across the wooden floor. The gross cackling continued on until it hit the edge of his bed. I can see you stole back me secret treasure. If and you're prepared to swipe something so precious to me, you must be a master, a well-trained thief. Come on then to the nearest docks tonight, and bring every ounce of skill you have with ye. I have a proposition for ye, one you can't refuse. The pearl continued to cackle like a brute. The noise dwindled further and further until it eventually fell silent. Ken just stared at the pearl, trying to understand what nature of funky fresh enchantment was going on. I beg your pardon. End of chapter one. Ordinary. <laughs>